Hello, my name is Paul Kurgel. I'm the principal of Bunker Middle School, and today we're going to do Seed Starting 101. It's not a very complicated task, but one that takes a little bit of time. As you see here, we have what's called a seedling tray. We will sow the seeds in this tray, and then of course they will grow, and then we'll begin transplanting them. Our first transplant, once our seedlings bear their true tomato leaves, will be into this multi-celled flower cell holder, I guess is what you'd call it. These were donated by Wagon Maker Nursery, so I want to give a little shout out to them. Once the seedlings become a bit large, perhaps five to six inches tall, we'll then transfer them one more time into these wonderful little clear pots that were complements of chula orchids, and they're also online. The beautiful thing about this pot is A, it's clear, so students can see the root growth, but B, they're made in the United States, and being plastic, they can be reused with a light bleach solution year after year, which is, you know, one of our goals is to try to be sustainable in all of our efforts. These trays we used last year in an attempt to keep all of the variables the same. We're using backfill seedling mix, complements of Barry's Greenhouses, who cut us a fairly decent deal because we're a school. Now, using peat can be a, a problem because the peat is a non-renewable resource in the sense that it's being harvested faster than it can regrow. Nevertheless, for us, using this backto mix is probably what we'll continue to do because we had such great luck with it last year. If you look closely, which you may or may not be able to do, there's perlite in here which helps the soil, um, pre prevents it rather from being compact, getting compacted. This is beautiful. I wish I had a smellometer because mmm, smells just like Mother Earth. You gotta love this stuff. So, to get started, we have our seeds here. These are Tomatillo Verdes. These are from Seeds of Change. Last year we went with Seed Savers um, and had wonderful luck. This year we're going Seeds of Change primarily because I like their packages. Students can open these packages relatively easily and the seeds don't go flying, um, unlike some of the more paper packages. We have here some expensive tools. Invested quite a bit of money. You see here the genuine, um, I guess this brand is Keech, plant or seed planter, available at most hardware stores, pretty expensive item. Here we have the expensive soil movers, again available at your grocery store, another expensive item, yes I'm being facetious. Here we have the infamous seedling waterer, which you'll notice is an apple juice container which was drilled in the top, there are about 13 holes in the top and it works perfectly for watering seeds and seedlings. I want to just put a shout out, another shout out actually, to Jeff, our former head custodian, who's responsible for bringing us Jeff's Magic H2O, which comes directly from his well. Try to stay away from uh, the water from the tap. Chlorine and fluoride taste good, but sometimes they can have negative effects on the tender little seedlings. So to get started, I'm going to take the seedling tray and I'm going to fill it about halfway up. Um, it's pretty easy to do. Students were doing this last week. Um, it did a really nice job because the bottom line is starting seeds is not very difficult despite what some people say. And it's just a matter of working with kids who do a wonderful job once they get going and can follow directions really well. These are all 7th graders who were sowing seeds last week and 7th graders who will again sow seeds this week. So you fill this tray about halfway up, maybe a little more, maybe about 3 quarters of the way and you have to smooth it out once you get a, quite a bit of soil in here to make sure you're not overdoing it. There is no reason whatsoever to fill this tray up because the reality is once the seedlings get their first true tomato leaves, they're coming out of there anyway. So you want to spread this around just like so and give gentle pats. Can you see me well? Nice gentle pats to firm the soil down. Notice I'm not smashing it. Just gentle pats, just like this. Good. Since this is a peat moss product, it can become very dry. It can also retain a great deal of moisture. So the first thing I want to do is water it fairly thoroughly so that the seedlings or the little seeds will go into their little happy homes and get a nice big drink. Now, you notice I'm not puddling it out. I'm putting enough in so that it can saturate. And that will also help me in doing what I need to do, which is to make little holes with the expensive seed hole maker. Now, while this is doing its thing and absorbing, I'm going to take a walk over here and begin watering some of the seedlings, or seeds, excuse me, the students have already planted. If you look over here, 
We have a wonderful little planting lab that was helped created by our maintenance. And all I'm going to do is look for where they're dry and sort of crusty. I'm just going to coat them down. Again, you don't want a huge puddle of water because that can create disease and something called damping off. So you can see here the tops are dry, which is a good thing because it means that the water is going down and also evaporating. You don't want a big mud pit. So you notice I'm just working this all around. You can see nice routine moisture. Make sure you get those cracks. The nice thing is with the super expensive watering bottle, it works pretty well. And you can see kids can do this. There's no fancy art. You don't need to measure the water. You just sort of coat it in. Let the water get a drink so you can get that water back out. And just coat it down, just like so. Swing the lights out of the way for the second round. Give me a nice coating. You can see that it's absorbing fairly quickly, primarily because this is not dry. Well, the top is dry, but the bottom is not. Now, what we do, because we don't want to use city water, is we have these tanks of water over here. Again, if you watch for deals, 386 clearance cans. And Jeff can get his magic water to us fairly efficiently. Oop, made a mess. <laughs> Excuse me. Kids can fill these rather easily because the spigot is there and also the um, extender. These are old, these are diesel cans as a matter of fact. I should probably label them H2O so no one thinks we're creating some kind of weird things up here in the science lab. Top snaps off, or excuse me, the top snaps off. It's ready to just sit there. Going back, giving these a nice little drinky, not too much. And the nice thing about peat under light is you can tell where it's dry. Um, you want to be careful using other kinds of soils because they can get muddy really fast. And the whole idea here is just to keep them moist, not to drown them out. But also you have to pay attention because these lights do, do create a little bit of heat because we're running them awfully low because we want to encourage these little guys, these little tomato plants to germinate. Now, we had a problem last year because we did such a great job, or the kids did such a great job planting, we lost track of what was where, which meant we ended with a whole bunch of evergreen tomatoes in our community garden and not as many reds. What we did this year is we used masking tape and a china marker in hopes that that will be adequate um, to just label these uh, for the beginning. And then as we move them, we'll have to label them a little better. We're going to go back over to the planting table now, right over here, and we'll begin sowing our seeds. Here's what I like to do. Students do a great job with this. I let them know, please poke this in up to the eraser. So, they're usually about 50 seeds in a pack of tomatoes. So I make the row across. The students make the column. And we do, usually do them about an inch apart or so. It just depends. I mean, there's no exact science here. So you don't have to be sit out there with a ruler and go for perfection. Nature has an interesting way of taking care of business. And sometimes we over-engineer a process that is, relies on wind and rain and other things like insects. So I'm making, just making my holes really quickly with the pencil, giving it a nice little turn, try not to dig up too much of this, but you can see that it's, it has in fact soaked down, which is a good thing. And it makes for a nice little turn, for a nice little home for beautiful little tomatillo seeds. Now as an aside, a former band director from Muskegon Public Schools claims he has a fantastic recipe for salsa using tomatillos. So that's one of the reasons we're planting tomatillos this year, to see if his claims are in fact true. What I've noticed with this project is lots and lots of people show up and help out. And that's kind of the beautiful thing about a community garden, especially in an urban school, is because it becomes community. And that's part of the beauty of this whole process. And this year, oops, there's a tomatillo verde. Beautiful little guy, isn't he? Gotta love that. So, take these seeds, just try, ooh, try to get one per hole. My grandma used to say you put two per hole just because you want to make sure they sprout. My problem is I have big, big fingers, and so it's kind of hard to do just one at a time. And when kids do this, I just have them hold their palms out and just sprinkle seeds right in their hands, and they do exactly what I'm doing. It's a wonderful thing to see because the kids are very good at this.
probably better than I am. Oop. Come here, little guy. Come here now. There you go. Give me your help. Now what will happen is these begin to germinate. There'll be a, one set of leaves called, I think they're called the sepal leaves. I don't remember. You'll have to excuse me. My training is in English and history. And they look, they're kind of like what I call generic leaves. And they're the first to come up. And what we'll do once they come up is, wa is watch for those first real set of tomato leaves, you know, the ones that look jaggedy. Now the cool thing is, there will be, because of my mistakes as you can see, there will be some of the cases where two grow up in one hole. And then you have to do something that I can't stand doing, but it has to be done. You have to pluck the extras out. When they go two to a hole, you got to pull one out. And that hurts my feelings, so I really try to do it less like my grandma said, and that is, I try to put one seed per hole, because I just have a real issue with taking perfectly wonderful little little guys and, and throwing them out. It makes me feel sad inside. And it's no sense in feeling sad inside when you're gardening, because that's not the point. So, as you can see, I'm just gently dropping seeds in holes. Now, they sell expensive things to do this. Called, they're called seed something or others. Um, not necessary. And I think it's good for, for people to touch as much of this process as possible. These seeds are open pollinated, which means they're not GMO seeds. They were um, collected by seed savers, or excuse me, seeds of change from open pollination, which means they're heirloom in some cases. In other cases, they're all certified organic. I think that's a pretty important point, especially these days when some tomatoes you buy at the store don't really taste like tomatoes anymore. And supporting the kinds of efforts that lead to this plant diversity are super important. Because if we don't have enough plant diversity, then of course the nutritional value of our food plummets. So there, I have my seeds in. Now I'm going to do what I tell the kids is a light seasoning. I'm just going to kind of sprinkle on a little more of this Bacto seedling mix so that they're covered. You know, this, this is not rocket scientist, science, folks. Kids can do this and do it well, probably better than me because their fine motor coordination seems to be superior to mine, despite my ninja training. Um, I'm just sprinkling around, and because I dampened, what was here, I can kind of tell where I am. Now, I'm just going to go like this and gently pat it down. I notice I'm not packing it in. Kind of like you do on a baby's head. You know, you're a little cute baby. You're not going to, of course, slap them upside the head. You're going to just kind of pat nicely just to show you care. And the seeds really appreciate this, despite what people might say. Now, so we patted all that down. We're going to give another little drink just to sort of seat the seeds. And again, the nice thing about these jugs is that they make a little stream, but you can see that it's not blowing everything up. Some of the market watering cans that you purchase, such a stream comes out that it's like a torrent, and you end causing big divots, and that's really not the point of doing this. You notice here, I have my, I know what this is now. Whoop, that's a little wet. Take it by the edges, maybe. I'm gonna carry it over here, and hopefully not drip all over myself. You can see I've turned some of our lights off, mainly because, whoop, I have to go over here and turn it back on. Mainly because I don't want to, I want to conserve a little bit of energy. And hopefully that will, oh, one more step, I think. Ah, there we go. Just like magic. Now, our maintenance department assembled these for us. This was supposed to be a computer area. We never really got around to being one, which is... Good and bad, I suppose, because now it's turned into a, a really efficient growing area. So I'm going to lower the light down, try to make it even. And these chains allow us, of course, to raise and lower these lights, which is pretty important because if your light is too far away, you're going to get leggy plants that don't do what you want them to do. So this was designed by our maintenance department, and I don't think the cost was relative to that very much high. These are normal shop lights. Um, there's nothing magical about them. I bought them at a local hardware store. Actually, I think it was Myers. I'm looking for the chain so I can shut off the extras. Because there's no sense in burning daylight, <laughs> quite literally. That, which, and these little switches are nice because then we can do some individual things. If I can find them. I don't know why these have the switches on them. That's kind of a drag. 